quill. These are the sounds of a beautiful serenade sung by the birds that inhabit this mangrove forest. Every morning they're full of joy, some flocking from one tree to another and some sitting still, perhaps in search of their prey, ready to swoop underwater where fish are quite abundant. But both the fish and birds cannot relax for too long, for they have a common predator to watch out for. It's the Asian water monitor lizard. In Indonesia, we call it Yawak Air. With skin blending into the roots of the mangroves, these semi-aquatic animals have excellent swimming skills, thanks to their long, powerful tails that help to steer the direction. The deep silence and harmony of the forest are an achievement that is fairly new. I am here at Taman Wisata Alam Mangrove in Angkat Kapuk, Jakarta, Indonesia, which just over 20 years ago was brimming with illegal fish pond activities. And 70 years before that, it was a dense mangrove forest. The local fish farmers here noticed that the habitat brought in a lot of fish. And so little by little, the trees were cut down until it became a hopeless, empty land. All of that changed when one brave woman stepped forward and secured the rights to manage the area in 1997. The late Ibu Murniwati was a botanist, known for her dynamic spirit that she shared with both the people and the environment. Two passions that resulted in this paradise forest. Her noble efforts, however, were no easy journey. Throughout the process, she had to sell her land farm and houses just to fund her conservation. But the most meaningful outcome from this journey has been the relationship that she has cultivated with the community. It took her nine years to negotiate with the legal fish farmers. To them, fishing was a livelihood that had been passed on for generations. Suddenly, while the land started to change, so did the fish farmers, who eventually directed their loyalty toward the forest. Mangroves are so much more than simple shrubs that lie quietly along the coast. Besides providing a nursery and sanctuary for juveniles, mangrove roots are incredibly strong. So much so, that they will still stand strong when hit by incoming storm surges and floods, minimizing the destructive effects of natural disasters that would have directly affected millions of us who live nearby. However, the best superpower of all lies beneath the roots. Mangroves have an extraordinary ability to absorb three to five times as much carbon as terrestrial forests. The carbon is mostly locked in their soil, where it can stay for millennia if undisturbed. Indeed, an effective and affordable method of mitigating climate change. That is why it is important to realize the value of the role that mangroves play. They are guardians of the coast, a simple shrub no more. Over 50% of the world's mangroves have already disappeared in the past half century, and over 60% of that loss is caused by human activities. But the future does not have to continue this way. The animals here will not exist without mangroves, and the mangroves will not exist without Ibumurni. After 25 years of restoration efforts, a simple ambition turned into a world of color, a world that is currently managed by her grandson Andika, who hopes to continue her vision. As Ibu Muni once said, we have to live with nature, not against it, because without it, we won't have a home.